Welcome back to another iceberg video. However, this one is different. For one thing, it's a sequel to a video I made. Also, I'll be doing it in two parts. I'm doing this because after taking out the entries that I talked about in the last video, there are 90 new entries. As such, I'll be doing four of the layers in this video and the rest in the next video. If you don't know what an iceberg image is, it's an image where well-known facts about a topic are at the top and obscure facts are at the bottom. This one is also by Reddit user Alfium. Before we start, I'd like to say that I'm not covering anything that I talked about in the last video, so while you don't need the previous video to understand this one, you should still check it out. Anyway, we've got a lot to cover, so let's get into it. First, we have the obvious ones. Uranus, which is talking about the planet Uranus, and the far side of the moon, which is talking about the side of the moon that faces away from us. Then we have warp drive, which is a fictional device in science fiction that allows the spaceship to go much faster than the speed of light. Then there's Mercury is tidally locked, which is talking about how Mercury completes the three rotations around its axis for every two times it revolves around the sun. This means the same side of Mercury always faces the sun. Or does it? Afterwards, we have antimatter, which is like normal matter, but has an opposite charge and it gets destroyed if it touches normal matter. Scientists create them by splitting matter into antimatter and normal matter by using a particle accelerator. Next, we have clickbait headlines, which is talking about the clickbait headlines that people make about space that are usually things like, giant meteor will hit Earth today, when it actually will just pass by Earth. After that, we have ice giants, which is a planet that's mainly composed of elements heavier than hydrogen and helium. Uranus and Neptune are the two ice giants in the solar system. Then there's E equals mc squared, or energy equals mass times the speed of light squared, which is a famous equation that I'm sure you've heard of before. There's a good video on it that I'll link in the description, but the gist of it is that the amount of energy an object has changes the mass of that object by the amount of energy it has divided by the speed of light squared. Lastly, there's solar eclipse, which is when the moon is in front of the sun blocking the light. Things are pretty simple at the Earth level, but it's going to get a lot more complex. First, we have captured asteroid moons of Earth, which is talking about how some asteroids seem to be rotating around the Earth, while they're actually too distant to be pulled by Earth's gravity. Next, we have Earth 2 found, which seems to be about news stories about exoplanets that call those exoplanets Earth 2. Then we have electromagnetism, which is the interaction between magnetic and electric fields, where the transfer of electrons creates electric fields, and a bunch of electric fields can form a magnetic field around them. Under the right conditions, these fields can combine to form an electromagnetic field that shoots radiation into space. Afterwards, those gas planets have no solid surface, which is talking about how no part of a gas planet is solid. After that, there's multiverse, which is a theory that's largely explored in science fiction, where there are infinite parallel universes, and each one is slightly different. Some physicists say that a belief in the multiverse without any proof could hurt public confidence in science. Then we have solar flares, which is a sudden flash of increased brightness on the sun, which is usually accompanied by plasma shooting out of the sun's surface. Afterwards, we have Earth-chan, which was a joke started by Trin Immortal about an anime starring the planets as anime girls, where the Earth girl, Earth-chan, would have a running joke where she says, I'm not flat. <laughs> I feel like this does not belong in the iceberg. Next, there's Prime Directive, which is a guiding principle in Star Trek that stops the Starfleet from interfering with the internal and natural development of alien civilization. After that, we have Relativity, which is a theory made by Einstein that states that space and time are linked, and the curvature of that space-time is what causes gravity. It also states that all the things in the universe follow a series of complicated equations called the Einstein field equations. Lastly, it's time to follow up on the foreshadowing in the first layer and talk about how how Mercury is not tidally locked. While Mercury seems to be tidally locked as its rotations around its axis and its rotations around the sun have a 3 to 2 ratio. To be tidally locked, you'd have to have a 1 to 1 ratio, so Mercury is actually not tidally locked. Our next destination is the outer solar system, so buckle your seatbelts. First, we have Mercury rotation resistance which is once again talking about how Mercury is not tidally locked, but rotates a certain amount of times per orbit. Then, there's Neutron Star, which is the collapsed core of a star that is 10 to 25 times the mass of the Sun. It forms when the star is a supernova and is the second densest thing in the universe behind black holes. Afterwards, there's Asteroid Missions, 
which is probably talking about the times when NASA sent spacecraft to asteroids to collect samples. The most recent one is when OSIRIS-REx went to the Bennu asteroid in 2016. Next, there's gravity is not a force, which is talking about a part of the theory of relativity that states that gravity doesn't really exist, and it's the curvature of space-time that provides the illusion of gravity. I don't really understand it, but there's a great video by Veritasium on it if you want to learn about it. After that, there's planets are very far apart, which is talking about the large distances between planets, the largest of which is the distance between Uranus and Neptune, which is over 1 billion miles. Next, we have Mercury orbital anomaly slash precession, which is talking about the first proof of the theory of relativity. Mercury's orbit rotates by about 1.6 degrees per century, but Newton's equations say that it should rotate by 1.4 degrees. However, in Einstein's theory of relativity, he remade the equations for the planet's orbits based on his theory, and Mercury's new equation gives a correct change of 1.6 degrees. Afterwards, we have the observable universe, which is a part of the universe that we can observe with our current technology. There are hundreds of billions of galaxies in the observable universe, and more will be added as technology improves. Then there's Proxima Centauri, very uninhabitable. We're just talking about how scientists found an exoplanet called 51 Pegasi b in the Alpha Centauri system that has a similar mass to Earth, but unfortunately it is too close to the sun and thus uninhabitable. Next we have the Big Rip, which is the way the universe could end that is talked about in a Kutzka's art video. It comes from the idea that the expansion of the universe is accelerating, and so eventually that expansion will overcome the gravity that holds things together and everything will break apart. Afterwards there's Event Horizon which is the furthest distance into a black hole that light can escape. After that, there's Sunspot, which is talking about how some parts of the sun are darker than others. This is caused by the sun's magnetic field poking into the surface in those places. Then we have Gravitational Wave, which is a ripple in space-time that is caused by huge celestial bodies moving. These gravitational waves transport energy as gravitational radiation. After that, we have Sun-Jupiter Binary, which is the theory that the solar system is a two-star system with the sun and Jupiter as the stars. The evidence is that in some ways Jupiter is similar to a star and that Jupiter radiates more energy than it would if it depended on radiation from the sun. Next, we have vacuum, which is a space with no matter. It is impossible to make a perfect vacuum, but you can make a partial vacuum using lab equipment. Afterwards, we have planets are very small, which I think is talking about how planets are small relative to other celestial bodies like stars. I don't understand why this is so low in the image. After that, there's standard model, which is a theory that describes three of the four fundamental forces, electromagnetic force, weak force, and strong force, and it also classifies all elementary particles. Lastly, there's many worlds theory, which is a theory that there are infinite universes, and every time something happens, there's a universe where a different thing happens, creating a branching path of universes across time. Now that we got to the outer solar system, it's time to make our last stop for this video in the Kuiper Belt. First, we have the Carrington event, which is a huge storm that happened in 1859 because of a solar flare that messed up their telegraph systems. All the time since then, there hasn't been a more powerful solar storm. Then there's Hawking radiation, which is talking about how black holes sometimes emit some radiation and become slightly smaller, and eventually they become small enough that they don't exist anymore. However, don't get your hopes up that you could watch a black hole die, as some supermassive black holes could take a Google years to die. Afterwards, there's LIGO, which is an observatory that checks for gravitational waves using lasers. Next, we have matter is only 4% of the universe, which is talking about how the universe is only 4% matter, and the other 96% is dark matter and dark energy. Scientists are still not sure what either of them are, and we only know they exist because of their interactions with stars. After that, we have neutrinos, which are elementary particles with a much smaller mass than the other elementary particles. They don't interact with many things, including light, which makes them invisible and therefore really hard to detect. Then there's Earth crust displacement, which is probably talking about a theory that says the relative positions of the poles and the axis of rotation of the Earth has shifted. The theory says that the shift is causing calamities like floods and earthquakes. Next, we have Saturn is flat, which marks the return of my old nemesis, bullcrap. This just seems to be a joke based on the Earth is flat conspiracy theory. Afterwards, we have God started the simulation which is the theory that we're in a simulation, and God is an AI that created the simulation. After that, we have negative energy, which is a very complicated concept that I couldn't really figure out. There are links in the description if you want to learn about it. Next, there's moon is lopsided, which is about how the two sides of the moon look different, and the side of the moon facing towards us has elements on it that aren't on the side facing away from us. Afterwards, we have nuclear force, which is the force that keeps protons and neutrons together in the center of atoms. Then there's inflation, 
We're just talking about how the universe is expanding and its expansion is accelerating. After that, there's Eta Carinae, which is a star system that became the second brightest star in the sky from March 11th, 1843 to March 14th, 1843, and then dimmed until it was no longer visible from Earth to the naked eye. Next, we have near-Earth asteroids, which are asteroids that orbit near Earth. There are currently 22,261, and 1,955 of them are large enough and close enough to be potentially dangerous. Then there's quarks, which are the things that elementary particles like protons and neutrons are made of. Due to a phenomenon called color confinement, quarks are never found alone, so scientists use those elementary particles to study them. Afterwards, there's cosmic web which is talking about how the universe is not just galaxies in random places. It actually has a bunch of galaxies clustered together with huge voids with no galaxies separating the clusters. Then we have the Copenhagen Interpretation, which is a view about the meaning of quantum mechanics by Niels Bohr and Werner Heisenberg. It is one of the oldest interpretations of quantum mechanics. Next, we have Singularity, which is the center of a black hole, which is theorized to have an infinite density. This is the part of the black hole that sucks you in. Finally, we have Universe in a Black Hole, which is a theory by physicist Raj Pathria, which states that the observable universe is actually inside a black hole as in a larger universe or multiverse. Coming up on the next episode of Universe Iceberg 2. World nearly ended in 2012 due to solar activity. Neutrinos are their own antiparticle. Zoo hypothesis. And more. I'll see you then.